On notes 5-1, we're going to be factoring completely. On the front is just a review of everything that we've already gone over on factoring. And then on, once we get to the back, we're going to be looking at four terms. So that'll be something new. So on number 1, x cubed minus 8, remember the first thing that we're looking for is a GCF. They do not have anything in common. So we're looking at how many terms. We have two terms. On two terms, you should be checking for either sum and difference of cubes or difference of squares. So notice these are both perfect cubes. So on cubes, you're going to open up a set of parentheses for a binomial and then a trinomial. Okay, so you'll take the cube root of x cubed, which is x. You're using the same sign, so minus. And then the cube root of 8 is 2. There's our binomial. To get our trinomial, we're using this here. So we're going to square the a, so square the x, x squared, and then using the opposite sign, so that'll be plus, you're multiplying the x and the 2 together, so that's 2x, and then the last one is always positive. The reason it's always positive is because you're squaring your b, so that's 4, 2 squared is 4. Okay, so once we have factored on cubes, we'll be done. So that's as far as we can go. So that's just a review. Looking at 2, notice there's not a GCF. So we're looking at two terms, either squares or cubes. 8 is not a perfect square, so let's look for cubes. We can take the cube root of 8, and we can take the cube root of 125. So this would be difference of cubes. So we're going to have a binomial and then a trinomial. The cube root of 8x to the 6 would give us 2x squared. If we take the cube root of x to the 6, 3 will go into 6 two times. So you have an x squared. We are using the same sign, so minus cube root of 125 is 5. So there's our binomial. Now we're using that to find our trinomial. We're going to square 2x to the, or x squared, which would be 4x to the 4th. We're using the opposite sign, so plus. We're multiplying these together, which would give us 10x squared. And then the last term is always positive. We're squaring the 5, which would be 25. You can always check it by multiplying it back through and it should give you back the original once you've combined like terms. Okay, so 3, GCF first. Notice they have a 5 in common. So we're dividing each one by 5. You're left with 3x cubed plus you have to put that 1 there. So after we do GCF, we need to look to see if we can factor the inside, 3x cubed plus 1. We can't factor that because 3 is not a perfect cube there, even though the 1 and the x cubed is. So that's as far as we can go. Okay, looking at 4, we're still factoring. So notice the GCF here would be 8x. So we're dividing each one by 8x. We're left with x squared minus 6x plus 9. <coughs> okay, so after we factor out the GCF, we're looking to see how many terms we have. We have three inside parentheses, so we want to do sum and product. The sum would be negative 6, product would be positive 9. So that would be negative 3 and negative 3. So I'm going to bring down my GCF and I'll have x minus 3, x minus 3. You could also do 8x times x minus 3 squared if you want to write it like that. It's the same answer. So make sure once you've taken a GCF out that you check to see if you can go another step. Okay, so 5, 
Notice this one we have two different variables, but we're still doing it the same way with any three terms, which is sum and product. So the sum is negative 7. Product would be negative 60. All right, so we're wanting to add to negative 7, multiply to negative 60. That would be a negative 12 and a positive 5. So for now, let's just ignore the y. Okay, so we're not finished because we have this 3 in front. We have to use the swing method. So divide each one by 3. So that would be reduce before you swing, so x minus 4. And then we'll take the 3 and swing it in front. That's 3x plus 5. Okay, so <clears throat> how to get the y, x, y in the middle and the y squared in the last term is you're going to put the y with the other number. So put the y with a negative 4 and with a 5. When you distribute it back through or multiply it back through, it should give you back the original. So you'd have to use FOIL to multiply by 3. Okay, 6x to the 4th minus 81. Notice they do not have a GCF. On two terms, you're either checking for difference of squares or sum and difference of cubes. So we know it's not going to be a cube because we have a 4. So let's try squares. We're going to have two binomials when you're factoring squares. The square root of x to the fourth is x squared. Square root of 81 is 9. And then remember on squares, you'll add one of them, subtract the other. Now, when you have an x to the fourth, you need to check and see if you can go another step and see if you can keep factoring. We cannot factor sum of squares. sum of squares there we can't factor so I'm going to rewrite x squared plus 9. We can however factor difference of squares and notice that this is the difference of two perfect squares here so I can go another step with that one that would be x plus 3 x minus 3. So remember sum of squares we can't go another step with but difference of squares we can. So anytime you have an x to the fourth that you're starting out with and it's difference of squares, then you probably want to check for another difference of squares after that. Okay, now to the new part. We're going to factor by grouping. So anytime you have four terms, you're going to factor by grouping. Okay, so first thing we always check for, no matter how many terms is a GCF. Notice all four of them have a four in common. So I'm going to take that out first. Just like all the other examples, we always check for a GCF. You have 6x cubed plus 2x squared plus 3x plus, you have to put that 1 there. Okay, so this is the new part. So when you have four terms, you're wanting to group the first two terms together. So I'm grouping the 6x cubed plus 2x squared. You're going to find the GCF of only those two. So the GCF of those two would be a 2x squared. Open up parentheses and then put what's left. So we're only looking at those first two. When we divide each one by 2x squared, you're left with 3x plus 1. Always bring down your middle sign, so plus. Now I'm going to group the last two together. So they don't have anything in common other than a 1, so I'm going to put a, a 1. You have to put a 1. Even if they don't have anything, you put a 1 there. When I take a 1 out, I'm just left with 3x plus 1. This is not my answer. Okay. So when I'm done with this part, notice these match. Those will always match when you're factoring by grouping on four terms if you did it correctly. So that's going to be one of my factors. I write it one time, whatever they have in common. 
Then, to get my other factor, I'm just looking at what's in front of it. So 2x squared plus 1. So those are my two factors that I found. I'm going to multiply them. It'll give me what's inside the parentheses, so don't forget the 4 in front to get your original polynomial at the beginning. So this is factoring by grouping. Okay, so the last one, notice they don't all four have something in common, so we're going straight to the grouping. We're going to group the first two. The GCF of those two would be 6x squared. You're left with 5x plus, that would give you 3. You're going to bring down your subtraction. Notice the only thing they have in common is a 1. You have to put the 1 there. Now, notice since this one was subtracting, we're actually taking a negative 1 out. So you're dividing negative 5x by negative 1, which would give you positive 5x. And negative 3 divided by a negative 1, that gives you a positive 3. Okay, so they have a 5x plus 3 in common. So that's one of my factors. Make sure those are the same. And then my other factor would be 6x squared minus 1. You can use FOIL, multiply back through, and it should give you back your original. They didn't have a GCF there, so we didn't need to bring anything down. So this is factoring completely. Tomorrow we'll get into using all of our factoring um, skills in order to simplify our rational expression.